and welcome to the show. I am Kachi Ofio, your host for the next hour, and I can guarantee that it will be an hour of non-stop entertainment because this is Arise 360. Now, we have such a great show for you today because like we do every day, we have used all our showbiz connections to get all of the best scoops. So coming up today on Arise 360, first as usual, I'll be doing my daily whirlwind tour of the globe as I bring to you the top stories from around the world. And then it's over to the music industry when I'll tell you what has been happening with our favorite hit makers. Also on the show, I'll be giving you all of our top recommendations from fashion, theater, and more in my review of today's art and culture. And finally, I'll be talking with Arise correspondent Judith De Silva in London to find out what's in and what's out in film and television. All that and so much more right here on Arise 360. But before all of that, let's start by taking a look at some of the top stories that have made international headlines as I tell you what has happened in a day around the world. Now, starting off in America, a new accusation of sexual assault, as well as the suggestion of an attempted cover-up, have been lodged against Les Moonves, who resigned in September from his perch at the head of CBS after 12 women told The New Yorker that he had sexually assaulted them. The New York Times published a damning report on Wednesday, which could threaten Moonves's $120 million exit deal from CBS. Now, this is not good. In the report, actress Bobby Phillips accuses Moonves of forcing her to perform oral sex and trying to hush her up years later by helping to line up casting opportunities. However, Moonves responded in a statement to The Times, insisting that the sexual encounter with Miss Phillips more than 20 years ago was consensual. Okay, we'll see how that plays out. Now, staying in America, Christmas came early with its precious gifts of love as Hollywood celebrities are getting married this season. Now, we spoke about how Miguel got married this weekend, or rather last weekend. And now, Quentin Tarantino is officially a married man. In news confirmed that the Hollywood director and his longtime beautiful girlfriend, Daniela Pick, became husband and wife on Wednesday night after a romantic wedding ceremony. Now, the bride wore a Dana Harrell gown for the event, which, by the way, was very private. There were only 20 people, and it was very intimate, and the ceremony lasted at about one hour. In an interview, however, a few months ago with GQ, Tarantino expressed his thoughts on dating and getting married in the middle of his very busy career. Now, he said when he's shooting his movies, nothing gets in the way. No wife or kid, but we guess it's time for a new challenge. Regardless, congratulations to the beautiful couple. And in Asia, Japan currently has a very, very weird kind of crisis. You know, not the usual crisis we see. This time, it's a loneliness crisis. And to be honest, what better way is there to cure loneliness than to rent a fake family to give you the love you desire? Well, that is exactly what Conan O'Brien did in the latest installment of Conan Without Borders. Now, in Conan Without Borders Japan, O'Brien discovers that there are companies all around Japan that offer family rental services. So he decides to do something crazy, all right? He consults with this rental family agent, Ishi Yuichi, to build his own family after two days of loneliness in Tokyo. Now, after searching through candidates, he finds a new wife, a 12-year-old daughter, and a father to build his instant family, who emphatically, now this was important, they laugh at his jokes, and they pay him respect. Take a look. When I tell a joke, I would like it if you all really laughed and thought it was funny. Could you explain to them? 
あのコメディアンさんなのであの今の本当の家族はあんまり笑ってくれないんですけれども面白いこと言ったら笑ってちょうだいね Could you do that? Could you laugh if I tell a joke? Sure. Okay, let me、uh, ask you a question.、Uh, do you guys like ramen? Ramen is key? No. Yes, we do. Not me. I like my men cooked. <laughs> Please tell them to laugh. Here they are laughing. This is so much better. <laughs> That must be fun to have a family that just gets you, right? Well, let's go away from that to what is still going on within Asia. Now, on Arise 360, we love pageants. And contestants are arriving in the Thai capital, Bangkok, for next month's Miss Universe contest. Now, they were excitable scenes at a top city hotel earlier as a selection of competitors arrived for a media event, the first of many in the coming weeks. Now, among the contestants, Now, this is really interesting. We have a top flight athlete, Miss Universe's first ever transgender competitor, and the first ever indigenous woman to win her country's title. This will be the 67th pageant and the third time it's been held in Thailand. The event, televised worldwide, will be hosted by five time Emmy Award winner Steve Harvey. And the winner will be chosen at the end of a live three hour TV extravaganza on the 17th of December. Interesting. Well, over to Australia now. See, Chris Hemsworth is a fine man, and this woman is proof of that. Now, she came out to say that she was scammed of over $20,000. After she thought the Australian actor Chris Hemsworth was wooing her on social media. Now, this is impossible because Chris is in India working on a new movie. Well, she said a man posing as the hunky, beautiful actor approached the 42 year old on Twitter, sending her a range of messages over two months, starting with, Hey, I am Chris Hemsworth. I am a famous actor from Australia and I live in California. You are so pretty. Can we? Well, while she wasn't a fan of the actor, she Googled him, and despite discovering he is a married father of three, she didn't question it as the message came at a point when she needed love because her marriage was in crisis. Now, to be honest, I wonder what Chris Hemsworth would think of this. Well, like I said earlier, he just rounded up filming the Indian leg of his movie, Dakha, which took place in Ahmedabad and Mumbai. And we'll now move to Bangkok in Thailand, and production is set to wrap up in late February. Chris Hemsworth causing trouble all over the place. Well, let's go over to Europe, where a bizarre friendship has emerged. European strongman Victor Urban and Hollywood star Chuck Norris. Now, the Hungarian prime minister and the Hollywood star spent a day in Budapest, and the pair greeted each other with effusive hugs, with Norris greening widely as he told the politician. I've read so much about you that I feel like we've already met. Norris was in the country at the invitation of a charity, and the right wing leader, who is set to become the country's longest serving prime minister, has already been criticized by the likes of German Chancellor Angela Merkel and the president of the European Commission, Jean Claude Juncker. For being an autocratic leader who has taken steps to increase his own power, curb civil liberties, and restrict freedom of speech. Now, I'm really waiting to see Hollywood's reaction to that very, very friendly meeting. Well, over in the UK, contrary to the rumors of a growing feud between Kate Middleton and Meghan Markle, Kate Middleton cannot wait to meet the new prince or princess. As her new niece or nephew. Now, the Duchess of Cambridge told the well wishes in, Eng in England that she's absolutely excited to meet Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's impending arrival. In her words, she said, 
It's such a special time to have little kitties and a cousin for George and Charlotte as well. And Louis. It will be really special. Middleton said she and Prince William's children are doing very well. And just like we are on Arise 360, they are also excited about Christmas. Now let's take this journey over to India, where Jean V. Kapoor is very keen on what she shares on social media these days. And she should be, because the trolls never take a break. The Bollywood star grabbed all the headlines when she made her debut in the film Dadak, which turned out to be a success at the box office. However, with all the positive attention, she has seen some negative ones too. She said she had to take down a photo on Instagram because someone commented it looked like she and her friends were in an orgy. Now, this is even the worst. In another interview, she stated that her sister has received rape threats because of something sh silly she did on a chat show. Well, this has made her very protective towards what she puts out there social media, though, like a big, amazing monster. While still in Africa, the famous Kenyan phrase, Hakuna Matata, has officially been trademarked. And going forward, one might be sued or forced to pay for using that phrase. Now, Disneyland literally wants to take over the world. They have been granted a US trademark over the phrase for use on clothing. Hakuna Matata is a Kiswahili phrase which loosely translates to no problems or no worries. Records from the United States Patent and Trademark Office indicate that the Walt Disney Company legally owns the popular Swahili phrase Hakuna Matata. The trademark means the phrase cannot be used on any other organization or on their merchandise or by any company unless they get approval from Disney. The Hakuna Matata phrase, as we all know, was popularized in 1982 by a Kenyan band, Them Mushrooms, in their popular song, Jambo Buana. You never know what you have until it's gone. Well, finally, still in Africa, the Ohima crooner, Mr. Easy, has released the documentary on his latest album, Lagos to London. Now, after exploring different genres of Nigerian music, the, Lon the Lagos to London film traces Afrobeat's gradual infiltration of London, which is described as the backyard of Lagos. Now, that's where Mr. Easy decided to leave his job selling pre-owned phones in July of 2016. Talk about a grass to gray story. Now, to this day, the UK is his number one streaming location on Apple Music and Spotify. Well, here's another amazing thing about this trailer. It places a spotlight on the people who create the magic behind the scenes, producers, scriptwriters, directors. Well, it's out for not for you to see, but here is the little trailer for you to enjoy. There's so much press on the biggest pop stars. There's so much press on Mr. Easy. There's almost nothing showing the guys behind the scenes. So the DJs, the dancers, the music video directors, the producers. I just felt like there was so much the world didn't know. It starts from Lagos. Well, we love Mr. Well, time for a short break now, but do stay tuned to the show because coming up, I'll be bringing you all of today's music news as well as the latest showbiz stories that have been trending on social media. Don't go away. Welcome back to Arise 360. I am your host, Kachi Ofia. Well, it's time to catch up with all those crazy pop stars that we love. So let's check out today's music news. <laughs> Now, every Spice Girls fan, including myself, must be excited about their upcoming UK tour, which is set to kick off next year, and hopefully, hopefully, expand into a world tour after that. But with Posh Spice not involved, who could possibly replace her? Now, that was a question that Baby Spice, Emma Bunton, was asked 
by her co-host on Heart FM radio station in the UK. Emma was joined by fellow Spice Girl Mel B, who quickly said that Victoria Beckham was not replaceable, until Emma suggested pop star Katy Perry. Now, Emma insisted that she was only joking, but it got Mel B thinking, and she said it might just be a great idea, but only for one song. So, I'm not complaining, fingers crossed, it might just happen. Well, let's talk about somebody who is being very generous. Kanye West and his wife, Kim Kardashian West, have been flexing their charitable muscle once again. And this time, it was to help a dear friend in need. Kim and Kanye donated $25,000 to an online fundraising campaign to help pay for the medical bills of Marcus Hyde, that is Kim's personal photographer. Marcus was in a near-fatal accident last month and is still in the hospital, so his family set up a GoFundMe page to raise $10,000. Now, with West's donation, their total was boosted to well over $28,000. Wow. Kim also urged her millions of social media followers to lend their support to Marcus and his family as well. Now, when your mother is one of the greatest singers in history, it's fair to think that she might just one day ask you to join the act. Well, that is exactly what music icon Mariah Carey did with her seven-year-old twins, Morogan and Monroe. Now, Mariah posted a video on Twitter yesterday of her and the kids getting into the festive spirit and singing along to her 1994 hit song, all I want for Christmas is you. Mariah also captioned the video with a message that said she and the twins had been practicing and this was the very first time they were performing the song on video. So we have it for you. Take a look. Three, two, one. You ready, Roro? You ready, Roro? All right, Rocky, come on. Okay. Turn up a little bit, please. singing along like I was right there with them in the car. Well, that was beautiful, and it seems like everything is rosy between pop princess Rihanna and her billionaire boyfriend, Hassan Jamil. And all those rumors of the split have now been put to rest. Exactly. Rihanna spent a very romantic date night with her Saudi Arabian boo at a Giorgio Baldi restaurant in Santa Monica, California. She was escorted into the exclusive dining spot by security guards and was led to a private dining room where Riri and Hassan spent over three hours together. Now, the couple started dating in the summer of 2017 and after photos of public arguments and then not being seen together in public. I mean, this happened for months. Everyone pretty much assumed it was over, but we stand corrected. Now, these two people are by far one of the favorite couples we all love, superstar couple John Legend and Chrissy Teigen. Well, they hosted their festive TV special on the NBC network in America last night, and it was a star-studded affair. The multi-award-winning singer and his supermodel wife host a show titled A Legendary Christmas on TV every year. And it offers a night of songs, sketches, celebrity cameos, and festive cheer in the run-up to the holidays. Obviously, being one of the most talented and decorated singers in the music industry doesn't leave John Legend short of famous friends to call on. So take a look at this clip from the show. Baby, somebody's at the door. Coming, I'm coming. Stevie! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas to you, too. Uh, Stevie, how did you get here? I drove myself here. 
It's a miracle. <laughs> exactly. You know, I didn't want to join the train of people saying this, but I'm sure we're thinking the same thing. John Legend and Chrissy Teigen need to start a reality TV show today. Well, that was amazing, and that is all of your music news for today. But it is time to switch in those Android phones and online applications to plug into social media when we return from this break. We will be checking out what's been trending. Stick around. And joining me now to talk what social media has been talking about and, of course, what's been trending, it's Rise Correspondent Judita De Silva live from our studios in London. Hi, Judita. It is awesome to have you back with that lovely Hi, pixie Kathy. cot. <laughs> Oh, you see, I do what I can. I have to keep changing up because I see you're looking all <laughs> lovely and rouge. Thank you so much. Now, you see, Judita, let's get into what's been trending. Now, there's a new Rocky spin-off movie, Creed 2, and it was absolutely fantastic. Social media has been buzzing. But now, there is a huge announcement just after this movie came out. So what's going on this time? Yeah, everyone on Twitter has been talking about this and on Instagram because obviously Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone made it famous. He wrote the character and he came back for the Creed movies that were the reboot. And he then took to Instagram yesterday and posted a video from filming on the set. I'm going to let you watch what he said and then we'll come back and talk about it. So here's the video of Sylv Sylvester Stallone on the set of Creed 2 with the director and star Michael B. Jordan. Take a look. <laughs> well, this is probably my last rodeo because what I thought happened and has happened, I never expected. I thought Rocky was over in 2006, and I was very happy with that. And then all of a sudden, this young man presented himself, and the whole story changed. It went on to a new generation, new problems, new adventures. And I couldn't be happier because as I step back, as my story has been told, there's a whole new world that's going to be opening up for the audience, for this generation. And thank you very much, Stephen, and definitely you, Michael, for making that possible. Now you have to carry the mantle. There it is. Wow, Judita. Now, I don't know if it's fair for me to say I'm heartbroken. Seeing as he's really been on this, what, what, you, what are your thoughts on this, honestly? But I, 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 listen, I've been a massive Rocky fan, the original films, and I actually thought that when he came back for the original, when he came back for Rocky VI, I believe it was, which was Rocky Balboa, mm -hmm. I thought that that was not necessary because after Rocky V, I felt he, it was done. But when he brought back Rocky Balboa, everyone who was a Rocky fan thought that's when the character would die in the movies. But he didn't, and that kind of left us because it said it would have been such an epic ending to the whole story. Mm -hmm. But then with this, he's now explaining that he never actually thought he was ever coming back. It was down to Ryan Coogler, who directed the first Creed movie that brought him back in to hand over to a new generation. So he's explaining that coming back as Rocky was for the purpose of letting this story leave, live on through a new generation. He wasn't really holding on that preciously to the character. But I still feel personally that if he died in Rocky Balboa, the movie, it would have been an epic tale. But I'm glad to see that someone like Michael B. Jordan gets to live off the legacy of Rocky. So it's a double-edged sword. There are pros and cons. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about Michael B. Jordan's character. You know, seeing as, you know, Sylvester Stallone is looking at leaving, do you think we might just get a Rocky reimagined in a Michael B. Jordan. Would he do you think, because it, it doesn't look like they're ending the series yet. So do you think we might just get that character relived in Michael B. Jordan? 
That's a very good point because I think you've hit the nail on the head. Michael B. Jordan will bring in a crowd that might never have ever been interested in Sylvester Stallone or the Rocky franchise. Based on Ryan Coogler, who we know directed Black Panther, and the kind of career Michael B. Jordan is having, he brings his fans in and they are now retrospectively watching the old Rocky films. So it's opened up Sylvester Stallone to a whole new generation. And remember, off the first Creed movie, he got the first ever award he's won for acting, which was the Golden Globe. So yes, I do think Michael B. Jordan is the keyhole to a new, a new life and a new lease of life on the Rocky franchise. Amazing. Now, now let's talk about some controversy with comedian Kevin Hart. For some reason, he just seems to attract a lot of those. Now this time it was over some birthday he had for his son. Please, what is going on this time? Okay, so um, his, you know, he was married before and then now he's married to Aniko Hart. They have a one-year-old son who celebrated turning one and they had a themed party that was Cowboys and Indians. And so Aniko Hart on her Instagram page started posting pictures from the, the party. And then there was instant backlash because people said the Cowboys and Indians themed, especially from two ethnic minority parents, was very insensitive to the colonization of Native American land and they didn't like it. So then Kevin Hart has um, a radio show on Sirius XM, Sirius XM Radio in America. And he just called the backlash completely dumb because first of all, it's a one-year-old's party. And second of all, it's like he didn't have a choice and it was just it was just a theme, for, just a fun theme for them to use. And he doesn't see why everybody had so much time to cause out to be so outraged as this thing. And he said normally he wouldn't address it. It was just that his wife brought it up, brought it to, to his attention. And that's why he felt he needed to address it. My goodness. Like I said, Kevin Hart just knows exactly how to drag the controversy to himself, but clearly he doesn't care and that's all that matters. Well, somebody else who is celebrating his son is Will Smith. Now, Will Smith has a son and now he is getting immensely emotional about this big guy. So what did he do this time? Okay, so Will Smith was um, took to Instagram and he posted this video, a message about his son. Because his eldest son, Trey, is by his first wife, Sheree Zampino, that he married back in 1992. Then they divorced three years later. Then in 1997, he married Jada Pinkett. Remember, over the, we've had those red table talks with Jada Pinkett Smith, where he said that when he met her, he actually cried in a bathroom because he realized he'd married the wrong person. But what he says about Trey is that his relationship with Trey really struggled for a long time, for years, because um, Trey felt abandoned and also felt let down because his marriage to his mother, Sheree, had broken down in favor of Jada Pinkett. But he was kind of saying that he feels so lucky and blessed that they've recovered their relationship and got into a good place. And then he posted this touching video on Instagram and everyone's talking about it. Take a look. Yo, so I'm in uh, Abu Dhabi at the F1. I brought my son, Trey. We've been hanging and I usually I take my kids separately on stuff just so they have their individual daddy time. So we've been doing this and me and him, we hanging at the F1 and he just hit me with the, uh, he said, you know what, dad? He said, I just realized you're not just my dad. And he paused and he said, I'm pretty sure you're my best friend. And I was like, yeah, man, uh, probably, probably. Oh, that was so cute. That was immensely, immensely, immensely cute. Now, let's talk about this for a second. You know, Will Smith, who as we have all seen, is living la vida loca. You know, he's in his best years and everything. So looking at this, how do you think this will, you know, inspire other musicians, other celebrities who have families outside marriages, but feel the need to always have this really intense tension? How do you think this is going to rub off on them seeing us? This is another celebrated man who is just putting his life together. Yeah, I think this is really great because even with like those red table talks with Jada Pinkett where they're opening up about their marital problems and then he's now talking about fatherhood, it's showing that even people with perceptively perfect families have to struggle to be perfect. 
So it's showing the honesty and the reality that it doesn't matter whether you're rich or famous, it doesn't matter whether you ha seem to have it all, people are human and he certain human problems are universal. So it's great for somebody that, think about it, the way we see Will Smith, he's the perfect family and perfect African-American family. And to know that he too had to struggle to have that beautiful relationship with Jada Pinkett and struggle to work through divorce and a marriage breaking oh, down and finding how to reconnect with his children, all of these people go through that. So it's a beautiful thing that to see the honesty of such an A-list showbiz relationship, it makes people empathize and feel like they can be one of them. Absolutely, I definitely love their family. My, this video reminds me of his character in Pursuit of Happiness, the you know ever-loving father. It's immensely lovely. But you know what, Judita, we absolutely yeah. love you too, and we are looking forward to chatting film and television with you. So thank you so much for now. We'll catch you later. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all for now from Judita in London. But not to worry, she will be back again later on in the show when we'll be discussing the latest in film and TV. Now let's jump straight into the performing arts and theatrical productions in our roundup of today's arts and culture. Now, the popular biomusical based on the legendary disco singer Donna Summer has come to an end on Broadway. Summer, the Donna Summer musical, opened in April and will have played 27 previews and 289 regular performances when it closes. The production, which sported more than 20 summer hits as part of its depiction of the late star, received two Tony nominations, but reviews were mixed to negative. But fans and others who didn't catch the show on Broadway need not worry, though, because a North American tour will kick off in September next year, proving yet again that disco never dies. Absolutely not. And when one Broadway door closes, another one opens. The producers of hit musical Town have announced that a production will be heading to the Great White Way following a very successful run in London. Now, the folk opera follows two intertwining love stories through an epic journey into the underworld and back. Singer and songwriter Anne Michelle takes a myth as old as time and give this a new life so vibrant and relevant that it leaves the audience spellbound. Hates Town will begin previews in March with an opening set to schedule for April. And the UN cultural body UNESCO has added reggae music to a list of international cultural treasures which it deems worthy of protecting and promoting. Now, UNESCO says reggae is sociopolitical, sensual, and spiritual, and it was added to the collection due to its intangible cultural heritage. The music grew out of Jamaica in the 1960s thanks to artists like Toots and the Maytals, Peter Tosh, and, of course, Bob Marley. It became popular in the United States, but particularly flourished in the UK which had become home to many Jamaican immigrants since the end of World War II. And George's Bismet's iconic opera, The Pearl Fishes, has returned to the Metropolitan Opera for the first time since 2016. Now, Penny Wilcox's breathtaking production, which was a highlight of the 2015-16 season, made its much-awaited return with an all-star cast. Soprano Pretty Yende plays the beautiful Princess Leila with Javier Camarena and Alexander Birch Elliott as rivals for her forbidden love. Operas are immensely dramatic, but we still love them. Woolcock makes the production feel contemporary, profound, and highly enjoyable, a fitting ode to the opera's creator, Bizet. Now, the issue of returning looted African artifacts to African countries has dominated news in the entire art world. And some African countries are speaking out for the first time since the release of the very controversial French report. Now, Senegal says it will return, or rather request, the return of all items in French museum collections that are identified as originated from the country. 
Cultural Minister Abdul Latif Kolibali said that the, although the country is ready to find solutions with France, if 10,000 pieces are identified in the collections, Senegal will ask for all 10,000. The Ivory Coast, for its part, says that it is ready for a negotiation and a cultural cooperation with France and other countries. Well, French President Emmanuel Macron has now found himself caught between mounting protests from museums and political pressure from African nations. Wow, and he decided to just put the word out there. Now it's like, boom, in your face. Well, it's all good. The influential London-based art fair will launch its first West Coast event in February with a number of recognizable Hollywood names and a few well-known artists involved. Now, the host committee of 50-plus individuals and couples includes Tobe Maguire, Serena Williams and husband Alexis Ohanian, and Salma Hayek. Amongst the fair's nearly 70 exhibitors, about one-third are homegrown LA galleries. The rest are headquartered in other major art cities, notably New York and London, and countries as diverse as Brazil, Lebanon, Switzerland, and Japan. Well, that was a fun run, wasn't it? Time for another short break, but do stay tuned to Arise 360, because when we return, I will be talking to Judita De Silva again. And this time, it is all about movies and television. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Arise 360. I am Kachi Afia. Well, from the big screen to the small screen, we at Arise 360 like to give you a helping hand with keeping track of what's been happening. So here is our daily diggest of film and television. And as usual, helping us out with all the film and TV news, it's our inside girl, Arise correspondent, Judita Da Silva, live from London. Hi, Judita. Thanks for sticking around. Now, let's get the show started. Let's start with TV. Now, I remember we talked about, you know, the rumors of something like this happening about a few weeks ago. But you see, Game of Thrones, they're dropping teasers around like it's some type of bomb. They're just waiting to explode. So what is the latest they just gave to us? Okay, so it was confirmed just yesterday that indeed there is going to be a reunion of a lot of the past cast from over the past seven seasons and including the eighth season of Game of Thrones. So you're thinking about people like Ned Stark, Lord Baelish, Joffrey Baratheon, Rob Stark, all of these guys are going to be coming back for this reunion. And the reunion, because remember when we had the story about Sean Bean who played Ned Stark in season one, he kind of let slip Slip that back in Belfast, they recorded some kind of reunion show with the T American TV host Conan O'Brien. Well, this is what he was talking about, and it turns out that it actually did happen. It's now going to form, unfortunately, it's not going to air on HBO. What it's going to be is a special feature on the box set of all eight seasons after eight, the season eight has aired on television next year. So it'll be coming out on the box set. So that's the only way you'll get to see this reunion of all the biggest characters from over the eight years. Amazing. Now, obviously, Game of Thrones is such a huge m series that they have to just do a reunion. So what can we expect to find out? I mean, I don't know if I'm really excited about this because it's coming out after we finally get to see the final season. So it's pretty much all has been revealed. But looking at the fact that they're planning on doing a prequel to Game of Thrones, do you think we might just get a little, maybe someone might just be a little to lose lip and we might get some information on that from this reunion. Exactly, who knows? I think that's probably what the great marketing for this thing is gonna be because remember what I said, like they know that season eight has been filmed, it's going to be aired next year, but they're planning advance for marketing and part of marketing is all these little extra nuggets you'll get they've already seen it on tv but if you buy the box set you get this um, reunion in the reunion they might talk about the prequel but it also it would be great to hear what the actors think about their storylines because one of the big things about game of thrones is even the actors never knew when they were going to be killed off 
So they just be getting their scripts and opening it at the table read and then realize, oh, wow, my head gets chopped off in episode three. <laughs> so getting their perspective of what it was like to live on the set of this show with full of surprises would be, will be great. Amazing. Although there are some people that I do not want to see out of character because it will just ruin <laughs> everything for me. But let's talk about another amazing series, The Handmaid's Tale. Now, we're hearing that it's going to continue despite the fact that it literally swept the board with Emmy Awards. What's that about? Okay, so the author of the book that this was based on, the 1985 book about the totalitarian society in America, that's what's led to the spin-off in 2017 of this TV series that swept the board, as you said. She's now come out yesterday and said that she's writing the sequel to the books. And it's going to be set 15 years after the original book ended, which she wrote back in 1985. And her inspiration is all the questions that the fans of the show and the books have been asking her since it came out and they read it. Plus also the, the world they live, we're living in today. So it's going to be inspired by modern America, as well as all of her fans' questions. And it's going to be called The Testaments. And it's written by Margaret Atwood. And she said it's going to be published on the 10th of September next year. So we can expect there'll be a TV show that following it very swiftly after. Now, you see, The Handmaid's Tale, that is the novel, was a book that became a beacon of hope for feminists around the world. I mean, it's like the feminist manifesto again. So looking at the era we're coming yeah. into, all the, you know, the President Donald Trump people, the Me Too movement, everything that is just bringing up cultural appropriation becoming such a problem everywhere, do you think we might see a lot of these elements in this new book, looking at what The Handmaid's Tale is always about, or the testaments now, rather? Actually, that is really great to actually explore, because I think we might do, because I think the point of Margaret Atwood saying that it's going to be influenced by modern society. One of the criticisms of Handmaid's Tale is that, remember, it was written back in 1985. So it's all white women, all existing in America. That is not the America of today. So by M Margaret giving that teaser of saying she's taken modern society into account, she probably will address topics like feminism, multiculturalism, racism, discrimination, and we will probably see more ethnic minorities brought into this world. And because it's not called The Handmaid's Tale Part Two, it's called The Testaments. Who knows what other characters that she'll introduce, but she's such a beautiful writer and such a feminist writer. It's bound to be something very engaging. Oh my gosh, this TV show is going to be epic. Now let's talk about somebody else. That, I'm not really yeah. understanding where his head is at, but let's hear your take on this. Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston. So he is pissed off about the whole documentary about Whitney Houston, and he's suing people. Please tell us more. Okay, so the documentary film Whitney Can I Be Me was um, a partnership between Showtime in the USA and BBC in the UK. So Bobby um, Brown and the estate of his late daughter Bobby Christina Brown have the lawyers for them filed a, law filed a lawsuit at a New York court saying that the over 30 minutes of footage that featured Bobby Brown and Bobby Christina was used from the 2007 reality series that Bobby Brown had called Being Bobby Brown. And he said this was used without the consent or a contractual release being signed by himself or Bobby Christina. And based on that, he's suing both networks for $2 million. Wow. That is, that is, I don't even know how to feel about this. Looking at the fact that it came out in 2017. Yeah. Why is this a complaint today? <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's all good, I guess. I guess it's all good. But let's talk about Kevin Hart. We spoke about yeah, him earlier. I think it's one of those things, retrospectively, seeing how well the show's going to do, he's going to think that they're cap making money off me. Off and the thing about it, he's suffered a devastating loss. So to see people kind of making cash off you is probably going to rub him off the wrong way. That's probably why... He's going to do this now because it's had time to digest and it probably just doesn't sit right with him. Absolutely. Well, Kevin Hart, we spoke about him earlier and apparently he still has some more shows and showdowns going on with him. So please, what's this one about?
Well, apologies for that technical error. Well, you know how we do it on Arrive 360 every single day before we let you go. We always have a final video to share with you. So today's video is going to be pretty fun. It's a surprise. Take a look. <laughs> in the Star Wars galaxy, adventure awaits in a thrilling new series of shorts. So team up with your friends. Are you sure this thing is safe? Grab your lightsaber. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. <laughs> Fix your starship. How's this? Use the Force. All too easy. Luke, you switched off your targeting computer. And stand up to evil. <laughs> I want to know what happened to the plans they sent you. I don't know what you're talking about. Punch him! Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures. Well, that's in a few days. We're excited. Well, that's all from Judita De Silva, and that is all from us as well here in Lagos. And from everyone here and in Lagos, thank you so much for watching the show. Remember, you can catch us every weekday at 4 p.m. right here on the Arise News Channel. So until next time, I'm Kachi Ophia, and this has been Arise 360. Goodbye.